Well, hi, my friends. <laughs> we just had snow the other day. I, I filmed some of it, but um, today is Sunday, and I, I want to um, bring out, I love this devotion. It's called the Maranatha, and uh, it's powerful. It, and actually, it is for for these times. It is for these times. It is um, very prophetic and um, very insightful and encouraging. But also, uh, it really tells it the way it is um, when it comes to what Jesus has warned and what we need to be uh, watching for. And so I find it um, really a great uh, devotion for guidance, insight, and um, support of of scriptures. So as I walk in this beautiful, um, this is my my mom's neighborhood, and you can see it's definitely country living, right? You know, there's this is the end of a dead end road. Um, there's actually a piece of property up here that um, they someone just bought, and I heard them cutting wood the other day, sawing and chopping and. Uh, they actually have, I'll show you as I go up here, uh, a lot of people are doing this. They're buying land now in the country, and they have their camper um, parked as they ready the property. Great idea, great idea. Um, so many of you who have come to my channel, you know, so many, so many of you came originally to the channel, of course, um, and, and, and some of you are still here. <laughs> I lost a lot. But originally, because it was uh, Starry Hill, they're off-grid, right? You came for the off-grid advice. You came to watch what, what uh, we were doing, uh, setting up our homestead. And that was, that was wow, a long time ago. So, you know, we had the, the foresight to understand that perilous times were ahead. And we were already doing it. Um, well, not as smart as these people with the RV because we moved to Idaho and there was nothing but a shell. And it was, you know, obviously poor planning. But we made the best out of it. And we created a beautiful homestead. And as one of the pioneer um, off-grid channels, um, the viewership exploded and people started waking up. But they still weren't wide awake because people now are seeing... Um, reach about. And I'm sorry, I was right. You know, I, I just... And this is before I really even had a, a, a solid biblical foundation to what I was, was sharing. <laughs> it's amazing how God matures us. And in and, and, and onion layers, he peels things back and shows us. And it's a learning process. And, and how each and every one of us are on that journey. And if we're willing, if we're willing uh, to learn from God's word, if we're willing to be open to the truth, to seek that truth, God will work with us. And, um, and I asked the Lord, what is it? What is it now that we, we need? And it, it is coming back to country living, to getting out of the city. So today I want to read from, it's called a Turmoil in the Cities. And what a beautiful setting, right? <laughs> because to feel connected to God, I really think you got to go back to this his creation. You can have a relationship with the Lord and live in the city, but but there's so many distractions. And uh, this is where the Lord needs us, especially during end times. So this is taken from 2 Tim Timothy 3.13. Grab your Bible, look it up. And it says, Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The, the devotion starts out by saying it's, it was not God's purpose that his people should be crowded into cities. Now think about that. <laughs> well, how our, our mother and father, Adam and Eve, they were created in what setting? A beautiful garden, right? So it was not God's purpose that his people should be crowded into cities, huddled together in terraces and tenements. In the beginning, he placed our, oh, look at that. That's exactly what I just said. Our first parents in a garden amidst the beautiful sights and attractive sounds of nature. And those sights and sounds he desires men to rejoice in today. Isn't 
Isn't that beautiful? It says, light has been given me that the cities will be filled with confusion, violence, and crime, and that these things will increase till the end of this earth's history. So this is, this is Sister White saying, this is what the Lord has shown me. And, you know, um, now he's showing me. And I'm sure he's showing a lot of you because just like back there, that camper on that vacant piece of property, what are they doing? They're building their home here in the country, right? Away from the bustle and hustle of the city. So m many of you who started coming to this channel in the very beginning, what was your, what was your intent? Probably to get prepared for the changing times, right? So it is it is probably safe for me to say that you too had vision. You too had a thought, an idea, that things aren't getting better, and perhaps we need to get prepared. And it doesn't make any difference how that came to you. For me, it's the Holy Spirit. For Ellen White, it too was the Holy Spirit. But I believe it's divine. God, whether you recognize it as God or not, it is divine. So let me continue to read here. It says, it is time for our people to take their families from the cities into more retired localities, else many of the youth and, wow, and many of also those older in years will be ensnared and taken by the enemy. You know, that is, uh, uh, that's really amazing because, you know, here I am with my mother. I love her to pieces. I'm reestablishing my relationship with her. And I see the changes in my mother. She's a woman. She needs to be taken care of by a woman. <laughs> um... It's really important to honor our, 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 our fathers and our mothers and to give them appropriate care. It's, it's, it's not enough to just provide food and shelter. They need the expression of love. They need to be um, um, valued worthy, ba uh, uh, valued and, and, and shown that. Uh, that their their lives matter even at this stage and so you know i'm beginning to see as i stay here with my mom the level of care that she needs and it is more than just giving her a meal it is more than just setting her in front of the tv and letting her be all day it's, it's just not she's she's a human being she's a person and since i've been here I, I, I love that the Lord has given me the opportunity to spend this time with her and her personality is coming out. She is just waking up. And I so, and then, you know, think about our children. You know, I have my niece, Sophia, and uh, the things that I hear about in the schools today is so scary. And I, and I, I tremble for her soul. I really do. And I could only imagine the children who are in the city and they never get to see this. They never get to play outside in a, in a setting like this where they can be connected with the Creator. Nature itself feeds us because nature is God. And that's what, what keeps us connected, keeps us grounded, grounded gives us peace and joy, uh, gives us a harmonious life. There is no distractions out here. There is no stress out here. And yet our children are being exposed to those things in the city. So I love what this devotion is saying. I love it. And so it goes on to say, out of the cities, out of the cities, this is the message the Lord has been giving me. The turmoil and confusion that fill these cities, the conditions brought by, uh, by the labor unions and the strikes would prove a great hindrance to our work. Men are seeking to bring those engaged in the different trades under bondage to certain um, unions. This is not God's planning, but the planning of the power that we should in no wise acknowledge. 
God's word is fulfilling. The wicked are binding themselves up in bundles ready to be burned. Wow. That is, these are, you know, again, um, these messages are so timely and so accurate. How can we deny? How can we deny these words? Uh, let, let me continue to read here. It says, um, we are now to use all our entrusted capabilities in giving the last message to the world. And we do. I mean, as believers, we have the message. And this is the end of times. And this is going to be the last message. In this work, we are to preserve our individuality. Oh, interesting. We are not to unite with secret societies. Oh, wow. Or with trade unions? Listen to this. We are to stand free in God, looking constantly to Christ. Think about this. This is crazy. We are not to unite with secret societies. Okay, have you guys been down the rabbit hole yet? A uh, conversation with a lady that I'm receiving treatment from here in Rhinelander. And the stuff that she knew, I mean, she was even talking about, and I couldn't believe she knew that. She says, you know, we are just stock. We are just stock. We're a commodity. Our birth certificates are actually stock. And I was like, how do you know that? She said, oh, I know a lot. <laughs> she says, I've studied all this. And she said, oh, yeah, the Illuminati and the secret societies. And she says, we're all just pawns. She says, they're feeding us poison. And she says, there's an agenda. And I'm like, I'm impressed. Somebody who has their eyes wide open. So do you know about these things? Secret societies? I mean, you see, you see, this was written a long time ago. And the vision that, 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 that Sister White had warning about all of this, how did she know about secret societies? God, Holder, God, just like he tells us today. He guy, you know, I tell you what, I can't do, I always say I can't do anything without the Lord. The Lord speaks to me. The Lord speaks to all of us. If we're listening, if we're consecrated, if we're on our knees, he will speak to us. He will guide us. And that's exactly what he did with Mrs. White. And But she wrote it all down. And I write everything down as proof, as proof, living proof that my God is speaking to me and guiding me through the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we always say test test all spirits, test all things, and see if it's true. You know, I mean, this stuff is lining up with the Bible. Now listen to this. Okay, then it goes on to say, listen to this. The ungodly cities of our world are to be swept away by the besom of destruction. It's a really unique word. B-E-S-O-M of destruction. In the calamities that are now befalling, immense buildings and large portions of cities, God is showing us what will come upon the whole earth? Okay, this is crazy. This is the first time I've read this. This is. Okay, 9-11. Um, we've got hurricanes. You know, look at Florida, the destruction in Florida. L look, look at what's happening in our big cities. She was already writing this, that that's going to come upon... It's going to come upon and, and large portions of the cities. And, and God is just saying, this is what's going to happen to this whole earth. This is what she wrote that God showed her. And it's actually happening. It's crazy God reading this. He has told us, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put his forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye... When ye shall see all these things, know that it, the coming of the Son of Man, is near, even at the doors. That's Matthew 24, 32, 33. Wow. That's what he's told us. And we're seeing it. I can't believe that today to read. I, I really pray that... Um, I know there's going to be skeptics out there. They're going to see and hear. I mean, they're going to hear Sister White's um, name and they're going to right away. I know. I know. And it's okay because you know what? I'm just, I don't care. Proof is in the pudding. Proof is in the writing. 
Proof is in, I mean, come on. How many, how long ago was this written? And it's accurate. And I've been preaching this stuff and, and, and God has been showing me. And so, what, am I crazy too? Are we all crazy? Wake up, people. Wake up. It is time to start thinking about either leaving the city or hunkering down and having a plan. I've been preaching this for a long time and I guess today, uh, the other day, uh, another day to, to say it again, especially for the, the elderly and for the children. Really, my friends, think about it. This is the best place that you need to be. All right, let me know your thoughts. Please be respectful. I don't care what you think about Sister White, but please be respectful because you know what? She is a sister in Christ and she was bold to write these things down for all of us to read. You either believe it or you don't, but if you don't believe it, then move on and be respectful because I talk about things that the Lord does in my life and pff, you could say the same thing that, oh, you know, I'm a fruitcake. Well, you know what? What? I don't care if I'm a fruitcake because I've got a big God and he's been right so far. Take it up with him. Don't take it up with me. All right. I do love all of you, though. I really do.